how you doing everybody so today we got some data mine information to share with you guys so they've revealed some more cards coming out i think during the february season so that should be interesting a lot of powerful cards they're called the black order Ooh, danger but yeah it should be a fun one and we got nothing to do let's get started So starting off, we've got the season pass, the season pass image. It looks to be the black order. I believe is what they're called. This is the image and the season pass will be black swan with some variants from Ebony Maw and death. Those are definitely cool. This was a very popular death skin that people wanted. So probably there's some players that are happy to see this as a season pass, which is usually cheaper than the bundle. So that's pretty decent. Most important stuff is the new cards. We can start off with Black Swan, the season pass card. So until the end of the game, your one, the end of next turn, your one cost cards cost zero. This is generally pretty powerful. Mana cheat is very strong. You can play this on two and you can pop off on three, especially with the new card that is protecting one drops. That could be a definitely play. Another strategy is to try to save this for later on. Um, if you are scared of Killmonger or you just want to play something, some synergy, maybe Hit Monkey stuff, you could play this on five and then pop off on six. It's going to be hard for your opponents to know exactly how much uh, cards you can play down. So that could be a nice like snapping mechanic. So there's definitely some potential for this. You do have to be running one drops, which some people don't like running, but if you do have this in your deck, this could definitely be a viable option. So this seems pretty good, pretty playable for a season pass card. I don't think it's going to be changed. It could, right? Like you could always just see that making things cost zero just ends up being too powerful, but potentially it seems like a very playable card. So definitely something to look out for. Next one is maybe the one I'm most excited for in terms of deck building uh, flexibility. Corvus Grave Glaive. So on reveal, you discard two cards from your hand to gain plus one max energy. This is very similar to Electro. Electro giving you the same thing. You don't have to discard two cards, but discarding in the right deck list is not actually a negative. So if you build correctly, this could be just a crazy upside deck build where you play this, you get to discard, and then you get the max energy. I will say traditional discard decks don't really need max energy. Um, you know, you you have things to play on four, you have things to play on five, things to play on six. It's kind of very simple. But what I'm interested in is electro decks that can take advantage of something like Corvus, and you can have this electro discard kind of game plan where you can kind of mix and match both and, and not have that discard that uh, annoying ability of only being able to play one card per turn so things like swarm right being able to add a swarm if you discard the swarm you can just play those for free it just seems very good so this card seems very strong probably the one i'm most excited about in terms of how it changes the game and how you you make decks around it so definitely an interesting card i could definitely see it getting adjusted uh but i say that for everything that's strong so but it is, does seem fun so definitely we'll have to see how it plays when it comes out next up we have proxima this one's hard to see because i'm covering when this is discarded you jump to your lowest power location that isn't full so this ends up being a zero six if you're going to be playing this card you're not going to be you're not going to be playing this normally. You're, you want it to jump. So ends up being a 0-6. That is pretty good. It does kind of remind me of Wolverine, though, in that Wolverine's a 0-4 a if you're discarding it. So this is a 0-6, so a little bit better. This might just replace Wolverine and Dex, which is good, right? Two more power in the lane, even though it might not be exactly the lane you want, but two more power in the lane is generally good. So this does seem... Like it has some playability. It's also a good combo with Corvus. So if you are just adding a Corvus and you hit the Proxima, let's just you turn it to a three ten with plus one max energy. It's so that's so stupidly strong. So there's definitely some synergies within each other here that can definitely create a super strong deck list. So 
this does seem playable. I would say it's good. It's not, it's not crazy though. So it's just something you have to be aware of, but the synergy with it is just generally good. And that's, that's something to be look out for. Next up, we have call obsidian. This one is a little bit restrictive. You have to play this at the location with affinity stone, which is one of the most restrictive ways you have to be playing Thanos or getting a location or a card that gives you an infinity stone, which isn't that common. They are adding some into the game, but generally it's not common. You can pull it with Lockjaw or Jubilee. So there are other ways to get it, but that's not like a consistent strategy. You do have, you can also soar on it. So there are other ways to get this out. It's not like you have to, um, you're, it's not like you're screwed without Thanos, but it is a lot harder. And Thanos is just the easiest way. And you do get this can't be destroyed function, which is kind of like a Tuma, though. A Tuma, if you're playing a Tuma, you're playing armor as well. So it's kind of the same. So it's it's like either you're playing stone plus obsidian or armor plus a Tuma, but a Tuma is not they're very popular. So you can kind of see like there's the historic value is not that high. Though I think Thanos players could definitely take use of it. A 410 is not bad. So, and it is, it is ongoing, so you can buff with Spectrum. So there's definitely some value here. I just wonder how common it's going to be. In Thanos decks, sure, if you're not playing Thanos, this seems a lot more restrictive than I would really shoot for. So, you know, Thanos isn't super popular right now, but maybe with some changes, this could definitely be a more efficient card. And then the last one we have a super giant. I personally don't think this is going to release in this form. I think it's too problematic. Uh, the ability, what it does for it to be released like this. I think at least it might be all cards played this location, you know, this turn and next turn don't reveal that one might be okay. Cause they did say they don't like cheap cards being able to affect the wide board or shut down high costing game plans. And that's exactly what this does. Um, being able to prevent cards from being played until the game ends. It's not, it's not like it doesn't reveal until the end of like the next turn. It's like until the game ends. So that just shuts down some combos completely. So it, it just seems too powerful, especially as a one cost card to allow this effect. So I don't personally think this is going to survive. Uh, play testing personally i just think it's too crazy it's too crazy but if it does survive pick it up the or don't because it's going to be changed i just don't believe this is going to stick around like once people play with this it's like no this is too strong and it's going to be changed right kind of like all the other like op cards right mobius and stuff like that you just get changed that's my thoughts from this it's it's just too good right now like reading it down looking at this that's too strong just being able to shut down combos on reveals anything destroy combos just so many so many things require being played early like you can't play shuri until the end of the game things like that it, like it's hard to your taskmaster is awkward there's so many like weird stuff that happens if you do it so and it also it also works with Eliath, right on reveals are Alaya targets, so you can just play this set up into an Alaya turn if you have priority. You just need priority when you play this, right? Because their card is not being revealed. So, you know, it's 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 too good. <laughs> it's there's no way. So I just don't believe this is coming out in this form. It just seems too powerful. Um, the rest of them I can see um, being released, even though you know they all seem pretty good. I don't, I don't think there's like a bad card. You could maybe call Obsidian is the worst, but that's not a bad card. So um, I just don't see this one in particular being released. So definitely some interesting cards and we'll, we'll see how things change as it gets closer, right? We always talk about the data mines and then as it gets closer, cards change. So I, I'm expecting that for these set of cards as well. And then, then we have the new season, we have the new location. Sanctuary 2, I wonder what that means. Add a random Infinity Stone, this will help Call Obsidian, but generally it's not a super important location, but I'm kind of fine with that. Um, and then Black Vortex, I'm not, I don't think it's a healthy location, right? The first card you play here becomes a six cost card. 
that's way too swingy of a location to have like you just play this you get a a what's a like a dr octopus you get a galactus that's annoying right there's so many like little six drops that are game changing ultron could just ruin your game there's so many ways your game gets ruined either your opponent gets something crazy strong or you get something like that's not that helpful or actively bad so just seems just seems too swingy of a location to be happy with right six cost cards are very very impactful right they, they get ultron right like you're like oh my god like how do i how do i beat this uh, conquest variant if you like playing conquest definitely see less conquest people playing but still and then we have the spotlights these are something pretty important so something we can take away is that very likely that the cards in these spotlights are not dropping right so they did say they'll have announcements for series drops the announcement could be that they're not doing series drops anymore so that's something i'm prepared for at least like I, I wouldn't be like oh my god i'd be annoyed but i'd I, i'd be like wow i saw it coming right so uh but yeah dark hog zabu not this is like confirming they're not dropping soon at all right like they're in february this is coming out in february but look the spotlight itself is not super exciting because it's they're these cards are pretty cards you should have if you've been playing the game zabu dark hog like are very standard they're good together but i guess this is better for new players right if you are a new player then you can pick this up but other than that like it's they're not enticing and i would say that trend kind of sticks around for for quite a while for this whole month where yeah you get the new card but the rest of them are cards you should have generally like if you've been playing since spotlight came out you should have these cards uh, actually, I don't have Nimrod personally, but Thanos is really what you're looking at here, which makes sense, right? Call Obsidian Thanos, it makes sense. So, um, wouldn't be surprised if you want, if you need Thanos, you can pick it up here. Um, same thing here, Corvus. Corvus. These cards do synergize somewhat. Stature, not as much, but still. X23 is pretty good, so. But. You don't need both. I don't think you need double ramp in, in this deck, right? If you're playing Corvus, you you don't really need the other two. So these aren't as synergistic as you would want, but Corvus is definitely a very, probably the best card to pick up here. So it makes sense that they put it next to cards you don't really want. Like X23 you do want generally, but it's not good for the Corvus game plan, in my opinion, right? Could be wrong, but. That's my thoughts. And then we have Proxima, Modoc. This makes a lot of sense. Dakin, that also makes a lot of sense. These just make sense, honestly. Look, it's it's a good three, four, five, to be fair. Well, I guess you're not playing this on four, but it's a good three, five. Three, like, and, and you have this, so it's coming out anyway. So I think this makes sense if you need the card. Unfortunately, I have all these cards, except for the only card I'm missing. Actually, I don't have Stature, I think. A statue of Nimrod, but I'm not excited to pick those up anyway. So definitely, definitely going to have to make some decisions this month. And and those are the pickups here. I would say I haven't done the num the math, but in terms of what looks valuable, we'll have to see because maybe the cards change before um, release, or maybe they get adjusted before release. So, but overall, it does look like Corvus is the one I would be most interested in picking up for my collection. Then we have these new variants and probably some albums are going to be coming out that include these variants, but we'll have to see. Yeah, and then we have the albums, but they're kind of just for whales, in my opinion, so I'm not really going to be looking at them too much. And then we have the bundles. I do need to make a bundle guide for this month, so we'll, we'll, we'll work on that soon. Um, if I were to skim right now, see if anything pops up. I'm not going to skim. We'll we'll work on it later, but overall when we look at the the new cards, they definitely seem strong. I don't think Super Giant's going to be released this this powerful. It seems too too game breaking. Uh Corvus seems really cool, but all the cards seem pretty strong. So definitely an interesting series. 
we'll have to see how it actually turns out. But that's the data mines that we got for this patch, and I'll see you in the next one. Educated Colin to snap. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you to marble snap. Your skills will be improving. How you do it.